Okay, so here we are, Milne Guy, the start of the West Island Way. Slightly different this year, slightly different this time. I have thrown an extra day in because the day from Cushell campsite right through to uh, Bain Glass Farm was a killer. It was almost 10 hours, so I've thrown an extra day in, but I've also had to put an extra day in because of the train strike, so I've got a day to spare which I'm hopefully going to rest up at Fort William before I do Ben Nevis the following day. Okay, so let's go. Ben Nevis seems a long way away right now, but well, it is, it's 96 miles isn't it? So let's go. As I remember from last time, path starts off nice and easy alongside a small river. Eases you into it gently. So, first part of the leg is from Milngai to Drimmen, Drimmen campsite, that's where I'm stopping for tonight. It's about four, four and a half hours hike from Milngai. Um, I'm going to stop off at the Beak Tree pub for something to eat and a cheeky pint, why not? Um, as you can see, I've got my full pack on right now. I am going to get the pack carried for the rest of the journey but I'm carrying the first leg simply because you've got to be at the train station in Milgai by 9 o'clock to catch the van and I couldn't get in until 10.30 so I'll carry it the first leg, it's not a problem. I actually feel that with this new pack, this new Osprey Atmos, I probably could have done it all the way but this current one is weighing in about 18 kilos and if I'd had a plan to take it all the way to Fort William I would have skimmed that down three maybe four kilos so all good ah no that white building isn't the pub it's the Glengoyne whiskey distillery beach trees a bit further up and here's that nice little house that you see in a lot of videos on YouTube that lets you know that you've not come very far and there's a long way to go Just a small section on the road, only about 200 yards, so not too bad. Even if you've never done the West Highland Way before, very well signposted. West Highland Way, Drimmen, it's very, very well signposted. And this is where it starts to open up. If I'm not mistaken, that little white building you might just make out in the distance is the Beach Tree Pub, hopefully. I'll be stopping for something to eat. Doesn't matter how well marked the footpath is if you're not paying attention. I just walked right past this. How can I not see that? That away. Ah no, that white building isn't the pub, it's the Glengoyne Whiskey Distillery. Beach trees a bit further up. And here we are now at the beech tree. We've arrived at the beech tree. And I'm going to have some food and maybe a beer. And here we are, German camping. Right, let's get the 
tent up. Okay, so day two, and we are leaving Drimmen Camping, and a great little camp like that is. Place to cook, showers, toilets, electrics to charge your phone, what more can you ask for? First part of the journey out of Drimmen involves a bit of a road walk, about a mile, before you get off the track again. And I can just see in the distance over there, Loch Lomond, meaning that is Connick Hill, which is where we're going. Okay, last little bit of the road section. Now, head off on the trail. Looks like the sun's trying to break through now. It'll be time to take off the fleece. So today's plan is Drimmen campsite to Cashel campsite. It's about 18 kilometres going up Conic Hill where there are spectacular views. Down the other side, probably going to drop into Balmaha, find a pub, have something to eat and a pint, obviously. Then on to Cashel campsite. Probably going to be about five, five and a half, five and a half hours, yeah. So, looking forward to it. Not many people on the trail at the moment. I think it's because I've set off midweek. If you set off on a Saturday, like most people do, it's a lot busier. But uh, as it stands, yeah. Meet the odd people here and there. But other than that, it's fairly quiet. Okay, we're still on the forest path now. Getting closer to Conic Hill. Our first views of Loch Lomond. Just coming out the forestry section now, and Conic Hill comes into view. Loch Lomond over there. Hill and the route up Connick Hill. And the sun has burst through just as I'm starting the ascent up Connick Hill. Uh, so it's really warm now. About halfway up Connick Hill now. The views at the top, in my opinion, are the best views on the whole West Highland Way. Loch Lomond appearing round the corner now. What a beautiful sight. Coming down the other side now, going into Balmaha. Okay, day three, and we are leaving Cashel campsite, and we're heading up to Imersnaid bunkhouse. It's about 20k. Not sure what that is in English. Probably about 14 miles, maybe. Uh, but yeah, lovely little campsite. This uh, big. The shop has much improved since last year, when it was shocking last year, they had nothing in, it's been taken over. Midges were out big style this morning, that's what I've been midging it on. Uh, got me some cream on today, which I forgot yesterday. Um, not putting my hat on just yet, just letting the sun cream soak in. Uh, let's figure out where the path is this way. Yeah, so a great little campsite this, Cushel. Um, let's get moving. 
along the side of the lock now on this path here and the lock is absolutely still calm as a mill pond as the expression goes This is a Salaki campsite and to be honest with you it's just wild camping by the lock but you have to pay for it. Um, there are some pitches but with stones and rocks it's not grass but a lot of people come here so it must be relatively well thought of. Now here is the Road Inn and Hotel. I'm gonna try and see if they do a sausage balm or bacon balm. I know they do. Last year I missed it by like 10 minutes. I think they stopped serving at 11. Let's see if that's still the case. Well, that's a big fat no. They do still do breakfast, but it finishes at nine. There's no way you're going to get here for 9 o'clock. Even coming from Salaki, you won't make it for 9. Oh well. You've got to love these little honesty boxes. And finding food, food is few and far between. It can be a lifesaver. Let's see what they've got. Oh, cheese roll. Muffins. Banana loaf. Flapjacks, quiche, hmm, I think we're going to have me a cheese roll. Still by the shores of Loch Lomond, will be for quite some time yet, all day today and most of the day tomorrow will be along the shores of Loch Lomond. It's a big lock, but it is an absolutely gorgeous day. If I'm not mistaken, this is the point whether you decide to take the low road or the high road. As in the song, Bunny Bunny Banks of Loch Lomond, you take the low road out at the high road, or vice versa. But yeah, low road for me, it's amazingly more seamful. Yes, it's tough. If it was raining heavy, I'd probably take the high road, but it's beautiful, so we'll take the low road. And here we have the very welcome site of the Inversnade Hotel. 
just over there. So the waterfall here, which continues on down there, right into the lock. Lovely views here. Oh, nice little pint. Right, Walker's entrance. Take your boots off. This is a tough, long, steep road up to Inversnade Bunkhouse. The last mile or so. It's not what you need at the end of a six hour day. And here we are, Inversnade Bunkhouse. Home for the night. Okay, all pitched up. Not bad little camps like this. Uh, quite small. There's not room for a huge amount of tents. Maybe get one more two in the middle, but other than that, yeah. And there's the bunkhouse itself. Looks like they do good food and they do beer as well, which is a nice change. 